everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Katie and I'm so happy you're here. Today we are doing Ikea hacks, which I'm excited about. I've never done one of these videos on my channel before, so I've always loved watching them. I went to Ikea the other day, picked up a few items, and I'm just excited to see what we can turn them into, if we can make them into something really cool. And I made sure to keep this really budget friendly. Ikea is already pretty budget friendly, but I picked some really affordable, pretty cheap items. So with that being said, let's hop right into these projects. Okay, so the first thing I picked up was this Borstad wicker basket with handles. Just a plain old basket with handles, nothing too fancy, but that is like the best type of thing to pick up for IKEA hacks because we're starting with essentially a blank canvas. I also picked up the Sorzo rug and this was $3.99. I've seen this used in a lot of IKEA hacks and I understand why because it's so cheap and there are just like a lot of options of things that you can do with this. I also have this 9x9 nine nine Hofsta wood picture frame. We won't be using it for pictures, but I think this was the most expensive item I got at $12. I also got the Marius stool, which I want to say it was either $3.99 or $5.99. I think it was $5.99, which is so cheap. So it's just got metal legs and a plastic seat, but I have a really fun idea for this. So the first step is to put together this stool, which is one of the easiest things I've ever put together from Ikea, which is not always the case. So I did you a favor on this one, but basically you just have to screw these two legs together and then flip it over and make sure that it's nice and tight. So this stool does come with a seat, obviously, and I'm just gonna put it on for now so I can make some markings. So I'm just gonna set the seat right on top and then use a pen to make a mark where it hits each leg. Then I grabbed some macrame cord and I cut 35 feet of it and I folded it in half and then I looped it around the leg. Then I took the left side of the cord and crossed it over the leg, took the right side and crossed it over that left piece of string, and then took that right piece of string behind the leg and pulled it through the loop on the left. And I'm going to show you a few different angles of how I did this. It's just a simple knot here, and then you just pull it tight. So again, you're gonna take the left piece of string, cross it over the front of the leg, take the right piece of string, cross it over the left piece, and then take that right piece behind the leg, through the loop, and pull it all the way through, and pull it tight. And this is the thing you're going to do for this whole way down the leg. You're just gonna repeat this over and over, and it'll start to make this little twisty pattern. I actually made a macrame hanging light, one of my first videos ever, and I used the same technique, and it looked really cool, so I thought it would be fun to try it on something like this. I've never done something like this before. But as you can see, it's starting to sort of twist around the leg, and it's a little bit tedious, but honestly, once you get the knot down, it's like second nature, so you can do it over and over, just repeat that process, and it will go pretty quickly. As it got closer to the bottom, I decided to put it up on my table just to make it a little bit easier. And then as the cord twisted around the leg, I would just twist the stool to make it easier for myself. So at first when I did this, I decided to only do like part of the leg. So to leave the top and the bottom open like this, you can see I left a couple inches at the bottom, but I ended up kind of twisting it and shifting it later on as you'll see. But to finish this off, I just glued down the ends and then cut them so that they wouldn't come loose. And then for right now, it looks like this. I ended up twisting it all the way up toward the top, but leaving the bottom open, which you'll see in the final shots. But the next step is to attach the seat of the stool, which again is very easy. You just have to screw it on with four screws. And then now it's time to put the basket on. So I chose this basket because it fit perfectly on the seat and you can't see any of the seats sticking out. So I would recommend testing out baskets, but this basket fit perfectly. And then what I did was remove the handles because I'm turning this into a plant stand, so we don't need the handles. So I just took some cutters and I cut the end of the handle and just pulled it right out. It was very simple and I did this on both sides. 
Now to attach it to this stool, and the reason why I chose this stool was because it has those holes on the seat. So what I'm doing is taking some macrame cord and I'm just putting it down through the basket and through two of the holes. And then I'm tying a knot on the bottom and I did this four times. So I did it all the way around the bottom of the basket. This way the basket won't fall off, your plant won't slide off of the stool. It's nice and secure. Then all you have to do is snip off the excess string on the bottom. You can add your plant and it's all done. Okay, when I got this frame, I actually didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I came up with a really fun idea. So I just took out everything, the backing, everything that was inside and peeled off the film that was on the little like clear acrylic part, put that back on. And then you may have seen me use this scrap of paper in one of my other videos. It's kind of like fabric-y, but what I did was use it to trace the mat, like matting that came with the frame. And then I cut that out so that it was the same size. And then I used some Mod Podge to glue it onto the mat. And just use a generous amount of Mod Podge. It does dry clear, so you don't have to worry about that. And just attach the two together. Then you can flip it over and smooth out any air bubbles and just make sure that it's nice and smooth. And then just put the frame back together. So you'll put this in first, so it'll show through the clear part, then the backing. And if you wanna put like a piece of tape or glue that little stand down so it doesn't flip out, you can do that too. Next, I just took my pencil and measuring tape and I measured the center on all sides of the frame. And then I've got these C hooks and I just screwed them right into the side of the frame. I didn't want to drill it because I wasn't sure. I didn't want to crack the wood, but I was able to just twist this in using my hands. So it was pretty easy. And then I just used this white string. The length will depend on the height of your ceilings, but I folded it in half and added some tape on the end for the next step, which is to add some beads. So I added four beads to each piece of string and I left a little loop at the end and then I looped that right onto the hook. So you're gonna do this on all four sides and then you can gather all of these strings up at the top and create a loop so that you can hang it up by a hook in your ceiling. Okay, lastly, I really wanted a wall hanging for my office to switch things up a little bit. So I got this rug and I tried to iron out most of the creases, but I did keep one because I'm gonna fold it and that's how I'm going to hang it up. So I freehanded this pattern. I've been really liking like abstract art lately. So I decided to try my hand at it and this is perfect for me because I'm terrible at art. So I just kind of freehanded some designs. If I messed up, it wasn't a big deal. I would just go back over it and retrace a new line and then I just took some simple acrylic paint nothing fancy and just filled in each of those little shapes that I had drawn I used this kind of warm beige color and I even painted the fringe on this side and then I mixed some gray with a bit of this beige to keep it warm and I did the other two shapes in this gray color so basically you just want to be careful make sure your lines are clean and just paint that right on. And I wasn't too particular about like how much paint I used. I wanted it to look a little bit like not unfinished, but not perfect either. So I really, really love the way this turned out. I love the colors, I love the shapes. And unfortunately my store was out of bigger wooden dowels. So I just took two thinner ones and added them together. And then I took a piece of string and tied it on each side. And then that's how I hung it up. Super simple, really easy way to make a cheap wall hanging for about $5.